In this video, I'm going to review some of the basic modify commands. I'm going to show them in relation to walls, but most of these commands will work in relation to any types of objects in Revit. And furniture, plumbing fixtures, any other families that you decide to apply them to. You'll notice when you select objects, the ribbon will show you things you can do to modify those objects. You can also get to these tools by going directly to the Modify tab on the ribbon, even if you don't have objects selected. In this case, I'm going to, since I'm going to apply them to these walls, I'm going to select a wall first. One of the more common tools that I use for modifying is Trim. For all these tools, if you hover your mouse, it'll show you the name of the command. It also will show you the shortcut for that command if you prefer to type rather than use the icons. And then if you continue to hover, it will show you a little demonstration and picture of what the command does. So these can be very helpful while you're learning Revit. You will also notice at the lower left corner of your screen that Revit gives helpful tips there as far as what it's expecting you to do while you're using various commands within the software. So in this case, it says to select the first line or wall to trim or extend. And like the picture shows, if you're trying to make an L corner, I simply need to select these two walls and then it will clean them up very quickly. That command will stay active so I can continue to do the same operation on other walls or objects if I needed to. I'm going to hit escape and show you some other tools instead. For example, the move command for which you can see the shortcut is MV. So now I can select a start point and a second point for where that wall needs to be located. When I move it, you'll notice that the horizontal wall has moved with the vertical wall because it understands that those two walls need to be joined. Another option to move the wall is to select a start point and then move it in a general direction and type in distance. So if I wanted to move it to 5 feet, I could type 5 and then enter, and then it will move it 5 feet. So notice I didn't put any foot or inch marks. When you're in Revit, if you do not put units, it will assume feet based upon the standard template of foot and inches as your units. The rotate tool is also fairly easy. I can select rotate and then I have to pick the original angle and then I can choose the new angle that the wall needs to be rotated to afterwards. One thing that you will end up doing quite often with rotate is moving the base point of rotation. If I need to do that, for example, if I want to rotate around the end of the wall rather than the midpoint, I have to start the tool and then drag the axis point to where I want the base point to be. And then I release it at the end point. Now the center of rotation, you can see, I have moved to the end. So then I can select the original axis and then the new axis. In this case, I've messed it up because I rotate them to be parallel, but they're still trying to be connected to one another. So I'm going to hit undo because that modification didn't work. The copy command also works very similarly to move. I can select it. Notice one thing uh, that may be important for you is the multiple option in the ribbon. By default that is often turned off and if you want to copy the wall three or four times you would want to check that first. Now I can select a base point and then I can uh, pick where the new wall is located and then the co command will continue since I have the multiple checked. If I did not check it, then the command would have ended after that first copy. So now I can copy that wall in other places. Offset is very useful in Revit as well. And I can select that and then input the offset at the top. For example, how far apart I want the new wall to be located from the original. And an important option then again is the copy checkbox, which I can either leave checked or uncheck. So if I want to relocate the wall, then I will uncheck it. If I want a new wall, I will keep it checked. And then I hover over the wall first to verify which way it's going to offset. And you can see the dotted line will indicate which direction. So my, if I move my mouse down slightly, it will offset down. If I move my mouse up slightly, it will go up. So I can offset continually as many as needed here. So you get faster with that after some practice. The mirror command, again, very um, common that you might need to use that. And you have two options. One is to pick an axis, which means there's already an object that represents the axis. The other option is to draw one. So in that case, I would be drawing an axis 
um, from some other objects or points that don't that are not easy to select. In this case, I'm going to mirror it to this opposite side of this wall. So I'm going to choose pick, and I have the option to either copy or not copy up the top. So that would be important depending on whether I want to lose the original. And then I select the object that represents the axis. And so there's that wall. Again, if there is not an axis object, then I would choose the draw option and I can draw one in at that moment. If I want to delete an object, I can hit the X to delete or I can hit the delete key on the keyboard, which usually is more convenient. Next, I'm going to talk about the array command. I can select that object and then the array command is there with the four boxes on the ribbon. You can see the shortcut for that is AR. Now I can decide how many I need. I'm going to choose 20 and then I simply select the uh, base point and then the desired spacing between them. So I'm going to go down five feet and click and then it has given me the array of those 20 walls as you can see. What's nice about this is that you can adjust the number here afterwards. So if I decided that's too many or not enough, I can say, oh, I need only 17 and then hit enter and now it gives me fewer. Even later down the road, tomorrow or whenever, I can select one of these and it is a model group now, but it keeps the array set up so I can go up to where the number is above the row of objects, click on that and then change that now to 14 rather than 17. So I can change this down the road as needed. Now if I needed to modify one of these in order to make it uh, not a group, then I could ungroup it at the top. On the other hand, if I decided that all of these needed to be revised, I could edit the group, and then maybe I need to shorten this up a little, like this. And then when I'm finished editing it, I will hit Finish, and then they all will change. So it maintains the relationship between all those objects as the array is associative, so to speak. So that is very handy. You can even do the same with the spacing. Like if I decide the spacing needs to be different, if I uh, move over the second wall, then all the other walls will also shift down. So that's uh, very handy with the array command. And the next one is split. Most of the time I use the split element. You also have split with a gap. The split element is very handy to just split one object into two. An example might be if you decide but this wall needs to be two different constructions. Maybe the left half is going to be a different type of wall. I can hit the split tool and then select that wall right there where it needs to split. And then I can select that piece of wall and pick a different wall type from the pull down. So that's very handy. If you don't pick a different wall type, you might find yourself later noticing that that wall has rejoined itself into one. Uh, Revit may do that. One other handy tool is the measure tool. It's just to simply um, verify the distance between two objects and that's the um, icon that looks like the yardstick there on your ribbon so if I select that I can measure from any two object snap points from there to there I can see that it's nine foot one with the temporary dimension that is shown so obviously that's very useful as well the last modify tools I will go over for now are the basic copy cut and paste tools and these are the same as many other programs that you've used on the ribbon you have cut and copy so I'm going to copy that. I'm going to hit Control C because that's the standard window shortcut. And then I can either do a regular paste, which requires you to find a position of where to put the object, or I can hit the pull down, and then you have additional choices, such as align to the same place, which is very handy to put it in its original location. If you're on a different view, for example, I could go to the second level, like here, and now I could paste it to the current view into the same location. So the paste options are really important because that makes it very easy for you to copy paste objects between different levels or between different projects, etc.